Phoenix Rising by Michael Anastas. Long into the night, none dared enter Paradise City. Once the mighty resort of the world, famous for its peace and heavenly nature, now it was deprived of all life, only populated by the brave heroes whom had lost their lives. Yet despite all the warnings they received, two trench-coated figures stepped through the rubble and into what had once been the battleground. Such a waste, said the first figure. From here, I can see exactly how the battle ensued. But alas, where are their opponents? Had not one of them died during the battle? I would think they were all deceased towards the end, said the second figure. Without a doubt, Merlin would not go down before his first challenger. Then it is official. The race have begun gathering their minions. You believe they would accept Team Rocket to do their bidding? I see no reason why they couldn't. Whatever the case, the bodies are gone. Even their blood has been drained from the ground, but you can still observe the smoldering remnants of their armored cars. I would think the driver would have trouble escaping before Merlin's flame descended upon him. You make a valuable point. If the race have brought their minions back from the netherworld, let us do the same for ours. The first figure stepped into the light. I suppose Merlin would have wanted to die in all his strength, said Sabrina, rather than grow old and weary. The second figure stepped up beside her. But Merlin still has a mission, said Mewtwo. The world is in peril, and as the leader of Ragnarok, he and his companions must not rest until long after his mission is complete. The two psychic beings closed their eyes and focused on the remnants. Ash had found what pride he had left to be a fake, a dagger-shaped hole that had been hastily concealed. He walked sullenly through the pouring rain, until he heard the voice calling his name. Ash! Ash, wait up! Ash looked over his shoulder. Misty? Misty ran up behind him and leaned over, gasping for breath. Ash, where the hell have you been? I tried to get into the McElwain building, and then there was all this gunfire and... He's dead. What? Merlin Durai is dead. Misty was in panic, but found it impossible to move. Merlin is dead? But didn't Darius... Dead. I thought Michael would... Dead. What about... Dead. Misty was afraid to ask. Brock? Dead. Merlin, Darius, Michael, Brock, Faith, Serge, Tommy, they're all dead! He gathered his strength and continued walking, Pikachu following behind leaving a trail of tears behind him. How? Team Rocket. James was never trapped inside the refinery. It was all a trap. Team Rocket? Misty clenched her fist. The next time I see them... Dead. Huh? Team Rocket is dead. Everyone in the battle died except for me. But... But that means it's over. How can we win without Merlin? Or anyone else for that matter? There are ten Phoenix trainers, said Ash. I'm one of them, and three of them died at Paradise City. That means there are six more waiting for us. Our destination was San Manuel, a fishing town a few miles north of Sierra Mana. There's a Pokemon gym there, but it has yet to become official, so it must have a Pokemon Center. We can stock up on supplies and find the other Ragnarok members. It will be hard going without Merlin and the others, but we must try! Misty couldn't bring herself to smile, but she couldn't help feeling a little proud of Ash. I wish I had enough strength to say that. It'll be hard, but we should have everything we need. We can stock up on potions, antidotes, and whatever else we may need in San Manuel. Merlin left us enough money for that. The Ragnarok members will probably have enough weaponry to spare. All we really need are more Pokémon. More Pokémon? asked Misty. You already have all 200. I did have all 200. Although I'd imagine that when I died, they all went to Professor Oak for his future students. Now all I have left are the ones that have been with me since the beginning. Pikachu, Venusaur, Pidgeot, Charizard, and Blastoise. Ash lowered his head as he walked. Christ, I really did suck in the leagues. I didn't even use six Pokemon like I was supposed to. Mewtwo is your sixth one, said Misty. Oh, yeah. He pulled his cap down over his eyes. But Mewtwo died in the battle at Saffron City. His hands dropped to his sides. Two hundred Pokémon, and only one went down with me. I don't know if I should be happy for their survival, or mourn the loss of the one that died. It wouldn't help you if you think about it. We need Pokémon! 
Misty looked up and stopped in her tracks. And here's our first catch. Ash looked up. Oh, God! Ash fell backwards in shock. I wouldn't have expected this! Standing before them, facing in the opposite direction, was a Leviathan, the largest land Pokémon in the world. He took out his Pokédex. No Pokémon entry found, said Dexter. Scanning upgrade chip. Dexter's metallic voice was replaced by a recording of Merlin's. Leviathan, a tiger Pokémon of the water type. While normally found in deep lakes, these huge cats can last for decades without having to return to their natural environment. Once thought to be fictional, leviathans are normally friendly, but can become extremely aggressive when threatened. Extremely aggressive, repeated Misty as she sized up the competition. Ash, I hate to break it to you, but this thing could kill one of your Pokémon with a flick of its wrist. It also says they're extremely friendly. It says that about all Pokémon! They're friendly until you try to catch them, then they fight for their life. Ash took a Pokéball from his belt. Don't you think I know that? Ready, Pikachu? Pikachu hid behind Ash's leg. Oh, fine. Venusaur! Leviathan looked over her shoulder and eyed Ash. He froze up and the Pokéball dropped out of his hand. Venusaur emerged. Venusaur, Ash stuttered. Go make friends with Leviathan. Venusaur rolled his eyes and took a step towards Leviathan. This is so pitiful. Ash and Misty exchanged looks, tensed up, and looked behind them. Standing there was Gary Oak, dressed in the same black trench coat Ash had seen him in many times before. Gary! Ash shouted. Venusaur! Come back over here! Relax, my unpaid friend, Gary sneered. I have not come to fight. I find that hard to believe, said Ash, as Venusaur came up beside him. You've already tried to kill me once, and then bitched out when it didn't work. He took out his Pokeballs. Whether you're here to fight or not, I think it's time we've settled things. You're so dull, said Gary, rolling his eyes. I'm not here to fight you. I'm a very busy man as of now. Maybe you're not prepared to battle, but I am. Oh, you'll battle all right. I never said you wouldn't. Huh? What I said was that I'm not here to fight you. I've gone through the trouble of arranging a playmate for you. He held his hands above him. Meet your new friend. His hands formed an arc over his head, and nothing happened. I'm waiting. Oh, she's here, laughed Gary. Behind you. Ash and Misty slowly turned their gaze back to Leviathan, and nearly died of fright when they saw her eyes glowing blood red. We all know Leviathan, Gary laughed. Extremely loving and gentle, yet highly aggressive and dangerous when threatened. The overall nature of this creature is what keeps her from being permitted by the leagues. Had you waited and let Leviathan find you first, she probably would have made the first move to become your friend. Of course, you blew your chance, and now she is mine. Gary stepped back into the pouring rain, disappearing from Ash's sight. While leaving her behind may seem cruel for the first time, I will at least have the comfort of knowing that she will be fed well when I come back for her. Leviathan turned her gaze down towards Ash and licked her lips. Are you sure Ash will survive? I am positive. Ash may be a fool, but his luck will prevail in the end. His luck will bring him far, and when he arrives, I will ensure that it runs out. You seem far too sure. What makes you think he will survive? Furthermore, why would he survive? Our intentions were to kill him from the start. I am well aware of what our intentions are. Then why bother with such nonsense? We are powerful enough as we are. Let us go forth and kill them now! Why waste your strength? I swear by Gehenna that Ash Ketchum will come to us. Then why are we sending him through such meaningless peril? Furthermore, what if your plan backfires? It won't. I have seen him perform amazing deeds ever since I knew him. Ash is a Phoenix trainer, and in turn a member of Ragnarok, who banished our primitive instincts to the Inferno. He has risen from death itself twice, and many times before he has cheated death in lesser extremes. You have my word that Ash Ketchum will bring the Ragnarok here. And if he fails? He will not fail. You have demanded of me the souls of the greatest warriors the surface has to offer. My promise will be kept, and Ash Ketchum will deliver the finest of the breed.